time. Now on the inside, the right hand to the body. Southpaw splitting the guard with the left hand. Rosado firing right back, right in the heat of the kitchen. There's a good left hand again from Guerrero. Right hook comes in that time. Tries to split the guard with an uppercut. Comes back with the right hook. And Rosado yet keeps coming forward. But the big advantage for Guerrero, his hand speed, he's putting together punches while Rosado's looking for single shots. Also a much better array, a better arsenal. So it's a, a better repertoire of punches for Guerrero. He throws different punches, Rosado does not. Good left hand, right hook also scored from Guerrero. Then he goes straight to the body. Again, a nice mix of punches from Guerrero. Rosado, all you see is a coin jab and a straight right. Good action round between these two. End of four. How about this crowd in Salisbury, Maryland at the Civic Center? With the chant of Fernando rooting on the 22-year-old, the native of the Dominican Republic, who has grown up to be a star here in his adopted hometown on the Delmarva Peninsula. Great action in that fourth round. They went to war. Guerrero came out on top. A big round for Guerrero. Teddy scorecard has it 39-38. Keep it in mind, a knockdown in round three, but then he rallied back to even up that round. If people are wondering why it seems like Guerrero has an advantage in certain departments, in technical development part, departments, as I talked about where he puts punches together better, he had much more amateur experience than Rosado, and he's showing right now. Big shots with the left hand from Guerrero. And now you can tell he is stalking that prey. 140 amateur fight for Guerrero, 15 for Rosado. And believe me, that is why you see that development in Guerrero. Where he comes with hooks, he comes with uppercuts, he comes with an array, a variety of punches. You haven't seen that from Rosado. Short right hook when he was able to get to the inside that time. Tries to sweep to the outside of that guard of Rosado. Then he came back with the left. I like the way that Guerrero mixes it up a little bit, Joe. You know, it looks like he's being aggressive. He's always coming in that front door, but every once in a while he stops and he takes a little step out. He draws the fire from Rosado. Then he comes in. He clipped him that time. See that? Every yep. once in a while you see Guerrero, he will not come in that front door when you think he's knocking there. Every once in a while he'll stop, he'll take a little step back, then he'll come in. Might not be a bad idea right about now for Guerrero to drop one of those left hands down to the body of Rosado. You got a guy in front of you like Rosado, he's shown a pretty good beard. He's taking those shots pretty good to the chin. Try him downstairs. He is a tough Philly fighter, is Gabriel Rosado. <laughs> Just missed with the left hand, did Guerrero. End of five. About a, how about an overview of the third round? That was the knockdown scored by Rosado, but Guerrero would rally back. And then Guerrero comes back. And in the fifth round, that momentum builds and builds and builds, and you see the variety of punches, the straight left hand, the jab, every once in a while switching to an uppercut, serving Guerrero, the local fighter, very well. Joe Tessitore, Teddy Atlas with you ringside, and joined by our analyst BJ Flores. In the last two rounds, Guerrero outlanded Rosado 80 to 39, was 67 of 34 to the head. There's a good combination again from Guerrero. BJ, what do you like about Fernando Guerrero? 
Oh, I think he looks fantastic. I think in the second round, he had kind of a rough round. Uh, Rosado got on track a little bit, but uh, Guerrero's extremely loose. Like Teddy said, he's got a great, versatile attack. He works up and down very well, and he's very loose. He's trained by Barry Hunter, who's got a couple other uh, very good fighters in the Peterson brothers, and uh, he just looks very comfortable in there, very relaxed, great arsenal. See some elements of the Peterson brothers and watching Guerrero. There's a sweeping left hand there. Talking about trainers in the corner. Rosado has maybe the hottest trainer in the business right now in his corner, but it hasn't been able to help him so far. Nazim Richardson, and of course, the trainer. Now the recent controversy surrounding Sugar Shane Mosley and the trainer of Bernard Hopkins. BJ, is there any hope for Gabriel Rosado here at this point? I think there's always a hope with a guy like Rosado. He's very, uh, you know, he's very tough. He's very gritty. He has got to find a way to avoid the left hand of Fernando Guerrero. Um, you know, he's got a great corner man in Nazim Richardson, but uh, he's got to get out of the way of that left hand and find a way to counter that effectively. Otherwise, there is no hope. Of course, much more from top 10 cruiserweight BJ Flores throughout the night with Brian Kenny. As far as different dimensions, he has far as different dimensions. I was just going to say that, Joe. As far as different dimensions, you're only getting that from half of the partnership in that ring, the Guerrero half. Where every once in a while he'll give an angle, he'll take a step back, a little step to the side, change things a little bit, show that versatility. Rosado, for the most part, he's right there, straight in front of you. And a more polished fighter. He's the 22-year-old with all that amateur experience and a very much committed pro at the Bald Eagle Rec Center with Barry Hunter, Tony Thompson, Peterson Brothers, well, and that crowd in D.C. that's been dazzling lately. Well, Rosado's going to turn this fight around. He's going to need to land the big shot. He's going to come from the right hand. He's going to need a little help. He's going to need Guerrero to cooperate a little bit. And that cooperation can come as Guerrero's having his best success. Get a little careless with this crowd here with the domination of the last few rounds and maybe fall into a punch. Yep. He's had so much success with that left hand, it could happen. Two to go. It's the auto. I'm a fight for these people. Nazim Richardson in the corner of Gabriel so Rosado. Stages, More pronounced swelling get up, get around the both hands, right both eye of Rosado give me that right up as he readies for that round right. number seven right against up, Fernando Guerrero. And that swelling on that right eye coming from the straight left hand of the South Pole Guerrero. And the only way you're going to get rid of it, well, one, you better move your head. That's one good way. And the other is get that end swell on it. Diminish that swelling. Well, the six rounds statistically the best for Guerrero. 52 connects, 110 punches thrown, both high totals for this fight so far. Unbeaten, 12 and 0, 11 knockouts. And looking to shine in this spotlight. He told us yesterday, I am ready for the spotlight. And on Teddy Atlas's scorecard, he's up 50.